at the outset uh, i would like to thank uh, meena for giving me this opportunity and also allowing me to present first because i have another session where to chair the whole session <laughs> so we don't want to get delayed so thank you meena for uh, including me uh, in this uh, macular edema the, the whole presentation uh, whatever uh, the topics i included there are no financial interest Uh, the macular edema uh, if you think about uh, we have uh, diabetic macular edema venous occlusion cystoid macular edema and macular edema secondary to other uh, causes actually the, but if you see the clinical practice nowadays diabetes is outnumbering all the uh, other uh, patients and the edema due to diabetic uh, is definitely more frequent in the clinical practice so i would be dealing with the diabetic macular edema first since the india is almost uh, in the numbers it is the uh, almost occupying the number one spot and all all of us should be ready to handle diabetic retinopathy and if you see the diabetic macular edema the diagnosis can fall into one of these uh, sub uh, groups that either it can be focal macular edema uh, cystoid macular edema ischemic maculopathy diffuse diabetic maculopathy or a combination of uh, them and attraction maculopathy what is the basis for uh, diabetic macular edema it's either mechanical or uh, the other angiogenic factors and uh, the concept of premacular bursa is very very essential because certain times the uh, uh, release of angiogenic factors collect in this premacular bursa and lead to persistence of the macular edema and the uh, inner retinal barrier is also very important however uh, i am directly going on to the management uh, here it's mainly one when you are facing with diabetic macular edema you need to see what is the systemic control that patient is having this is very very basic and uh, all patients should be controlled well in systemic before you even you think about uh, diabetic macular edema as i said different types are there you need to use your uh, clinical equipment by slit lamp examination and 90 day examination and then the help of angiography or oct which cases you need to do oct or angiography you need to decide and then come to a, one of the types of diabetic macular edema first step in uh, management or clinical diagnosis is what type of macular diabetic macular edema you are dealing with this is very very essential and once the type of diabetic macular edema you diagnose then the management lines are very clear like for photocoagulation uh, it it is very effective in the focal uh, diabetic macular edema whereas diffuse diabetic macular edema it is not so effective though here the formatting little bit change but um, it's okay uh, then the cystoid macular edema when you are handling cystoid macular edema it is either uh, anti vegf agents or the steroids that is the main line of treatment if you try laser there it's less likely to work so it's very very essential to see what uh, type of diabetic macular edema you are dealing with and ischemic probably uh, it is not amenable for any uh, type of uh, management but in very rare cases where the thickening is too much probably you can try as a temporary measure the steroids as well as anti vegf agents and a limited laser probably can be tried but main challenge in diabetic macular edema is in diffuse diabetic macular edema whenever there is a more than two disc areas of uh, macular uh, retinal thickening then we coin that as di uh, diffuse diabetic macular edema and when it is bilateral uh, there is a very high chance of uh, systemic derangement so it is very very essential in this group of patients to work thoroughly the system and then uh, take care of them is uh, very uh, very much needed once you stabilize the systemic status then you see whether there is any existence of pvd or vitreous traction it can be a point traction it can be a broad based uh, traction if the traction is there the answer would be surgical
If there is no traction and a complete PVD is there, then different modalities, either laser, combination laser, anti vegf steroid therapy will be uh, the options which are available. So in single uh, flow chat, almost I nearly finished my talk on diabetic macular edema. However, this is an example of a tra uh, vitreo macular traction and this is the surgical result in this patient where a repeated laser would not benefit these patients so it's very very essential to uh, see the traction and uh, I would be quoting some trials uh, which are uh, done uh, by anti vegf agents and then uh, the steroids also but I have no financial interest in that only th this is to tell you that there is a possibility of improvements with these agents and if you see uh, in diabetic macular edema there is uh, gain of uh, vision over 12 months period when repeated anti vegf injections are given however in which cases this need to be used you need to be careful and choosy while uh, handling the patients uh, the similar uh, result in OCT thickness reduction is also there and there is another study where uh, if you uh, see the branch vein occlusion. In the venous occlusions, the branch vein occlusion management is uh, much more clear compared to a central retinal vein occlusion. Central retinal vein occlusion, the management is not so clear. But uh, in branch vein occlusion, always you should see whether you are dealing with, again, here, type of macular edema, which you are dealing with is very very essential in drawing the management lines if it is ischemic don't uh, think about much treatment don't promise anything to the patient you may think about different treatments but if it is uh, no macular edema, good perfusion is there and a macular edema then you can think about grid or anti vegf or steroids out of this uh, I personally more rely on the laser, though I take the help of anti vegf agents or steroids temporarily to reduce the retinal thickness. There are few studies um, on BRVO which are showing promising results with anti vegf agents uh, in BRVO. However, you again, as I stated, for diabetic macular edema, you need to use, use them judiciously. Now come to this central uh, retinal vein occlusion. If you see this uh, slide, it is very confusing. There are different management strategies which have been uh, stated here. And the management of CRVO when the patient comes to you also would be that much confusing. Only in non-ischemic CRVOs with macular edema, the results are gratifying, whereas ischemic don't promise. And one important aspect you need to tell or uh, to think about in uh, central retinal vein occlusion is in initial six weeks to three months period, there can be an evolution from initial presentation of non-ischemic CRVO, which will get converted to a ischemic CRVO. Certain times, even the experienced clinicians get into the trap of the natural course of central retinal vein occlusion because the, initially the patient presents with good vision and you start one treatment and the patient in six weeks time transforms into ischemic without any of your interventions and he loses vision and blames that class of vision to your intervention. So it's always better to see what type of central retinal vein occlusion you are dealing with. This can be better known with either pupillary reaction if you need to carefully measure and the ERG. Combination of these two will give you the best, um, the best possible prediction. So uh, there are again few studies uh, both using anti uh, here showing good promising results and uh, even the steroids, mainly the posodex, it also shows good improvement. However, if you see one slide, that is, um, in this this group is uh, BRVO and this group is CRVO. The CRVO group is not doing so well. This fact you need to remember while handling uh, the patients in the clinic. In conclusion, DME is more common clinical problem we encounter 
uh, and DME algorithm should be followed, which I have told you. The combination therapy is gaining more uh, clinical pra more in clinical practice in complex diabetic macular edemas. A BRV with macular edema is more or less clear in uh, management. CRV with macular edema is little more uh, complex and it may require little longer term management. Thank you for your attention.